Our story today is called A Tale of Two Beasts. And the story starts off with a quote that says, there are two sides to every story, and then there is the truth. That's a quote by Mark Twain. I was walking home from grandma's house through the deep dark woods when I spied a strange little beast. He was stuck up in a tree and whining sadly. So I decided to rescue him. I'll call you Fang, I told him, and I wrapped him warmly in my scarf and carried him safely home. I gave him a lovely bath and a gorgeous new hat and sweater and a delicious bowl of fresh nuts. I made him a beautiful house and gave him Lord Rex to play with. I wonder if the beast is very happy about this. What do you think? I took him out for lots of long walkies to keep him fit and healthy. And I showed him off to all my friends who loved him nearly as much as I did. But for some strange reason, the little beast did not look very happy. In fact, he was looking rather not. I hope he's not sick, I thought, and opened the window to cool him down. Oh, he was looking very hot. Also, probably not. I opened the window to cool him down, but then something terrible happened. He threw off his clothes and leapt out the window and ran away as fast as he could back to the deep, dark woods. I wanted to go and look for him, but mama had other plans. Dinner time, bleh, bath time, rah, bedtime. Rah. I couldn't sleep. I missed the little beast and wondered if I would ever see him again. But then a small furry shadow appeared at the foot of my bed. The strange little beast had returned. He seemed quite pleased to see me. And I began to think that maybe, just maybe, he wasn't that strange after all. What is she doing now? I wonder why he came back. A Tale of Two Beasts, part two, The Terrible Beast. For David, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, Charles Dickens. Well, I was hanging from my favorite tree singing happily to the birds when I was ambushed by a terrible beast. She growled at me and tied me up and carried me off to her secret lair. Hmm, seems like this story is the perspective of the beast, whereas the first one was the perspective of the little girl. She made me disgustingly clean and dressed me up in a ridiculous hat and sweater and tried to make me eat squirrel food. She kept me in a tiny box with nothing for me to do and nowhere for me to hang from. She made me walk backwards and forwards and backwards again for no reason whatsoever. And she showed me off to a herd of even wilder beasts who were just as terrible as she was. I had had enough. I put, made a cunning plan and put it straight into action. Free once more. I raced back to the deep dark woods before the terrible beast could catch me. It was so peaceful in the deep dark woods, a bit too peaceful, perhaps, and so, and also a little bit wet. In weather like this, one could do with a nice warm hat. I snuck back to retrieve it under the cover of darkness. Oh, that's why the beast went back. The terrible beast was waiting for me. She seemed quite pleased to see me, and I began to think that maybe, just maybe, she wasn't that terrible. After all, what is that little girl doing now? Is she running off to the forest? I think so, look at that picture. So our theme for this month was story. And I thought this was a great book to show you that there are two sides, sometimes even more to every story. In this book, we got the perspective, the little girl and how she saw this story and of the beast and how he saw the story.
So that is the end of our story today. Thanks for joining me.